Praise the Lord, everyone. Sean back with another video for you all. Today I'll be coming out of John chapter 15, and I'm just going to read a few verses. Uh, for those who believe in losing salvation, another uh, passage of scripture they will use is they will come out of John 15, where Christ talks about how he's the vine and we're the branches, and they will come away with the understanding that you know if you don't do enough good works you do too many bad works that you will indeed lose your salvation so i'm going to read a few verses and then we're going to you know talk about it starting with verse one i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now we're going to jump down to verses 5 and 6. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So... They will see verses like this that basically say, you know, if you don't bear any fruit, you know, you're going to be, you know, taken away. You know, at some point, you as a branch were connected to that true vine, but you didn't bear any good fruit. So now you, you know, lost salvation. And this is how they kind of come with that. Now, you know, we're going to do how we like to do, and we're going to put this thing in, in context and try to get a, a understanding of what's going on here. So what I actually want to do is, first of all, I'm on normally when I do my, these type of Bible videos, I, I normally like to be on a Bible gateway.com I've done some videos with biblehub.com but uh, I like Bible Gateway their setup um, I like their setup too here but just for video purposes I just like uh, Bible Gateway but in any case I came here because one of the cool things about Bible Gateway as you can see up here in the bold text it says Jesus the true vine what they'll do is they will have like a a header or source some sort of subtitle over a particular section just to kind of give you a brief snapshot on what this particular uh, verses is talking about so I actually want to use that just to kind of gateway into the point I want to make uh, involving John 15 so we're going to go all the way to John 13 so here it says Jesus washes the disciples feet so what we're going to do is we're going to read verse 1 we're at John chapter 13 verse 1 it reads now before the feast of the Passover when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the father having loved his own which were in the world he loved them to the end so essentially what's going on here in chapter 13 and as we will see there is a conversation that Christ is having that starts from chapter 13 of John go and it goes all the way to John 17 and here we see that you know Jesus is starting off by washing the disciples feet and this is happening before you know the last supper and essentially Christ is letting Christ is letting them know that his time has come. So from John 13 to John 17, essentially this conversation is about Christ comforting his disciples before his departure. You know, you can just imagine how if just just put yourself in the place of these apostles. You know, you've been with Jesus for, at this point, about three and a half years now. 
and you've been involved in his ministry you've been hand selected you've you know grown to really know and love him like you physically got to walk with you know the son of god right and now his whole reason for being here now that hour has come it's time for him to to die you know for sin and you know if you have someone that someone is your leader and you you're looking up to and then that person is going to be taken away you know you can get very distraught very you know panic panicky so essentially this whole thing is just christ reassuring them that in his physical absence that they will still be just as effective and honestly as if you were to keep on looking they'll you know be even i would say more effective because christ said greater works than you will do than i so if you look we see here it says jesus washes the feet of the of the disciples we'll go down just so i can kind of you know show what's going on jesus predicts his betrayal a new command I give you. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. So you see kind of the flow of what's going on. Jesus is laying things out and they're reacting to it. You know, it's almost like, what, what? Like, you know, no, Lord, no, no, no. And it's like, you know, my, my time has come. So now look, what does it say? Jesus comforts the disciples. As you read these titles, you can just kind of just picture the flow of the conversation, just the initial Jesus saying what he's about to do, the re the natural reaction, how Jesus is responding, how the conversation is going. So it says Jesus comforts the disciples. The way, the truth and the life. Right. That's what he is. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit so you know how Christ said it's expedient that I leave because if I don't leave then the comforter won't come but if I go to my father then the comforter will come so you know even in Christ's absence there is still God will still be with them literally the way Christ was physically with them the Holy Spirit will literally be with them just indwelt inside of them right Look, peace I leave with you. All like I said, this whole thing, this whole conversation is a comforting conversation. Okay? So now So just to show, I'm gonna just keep going all the way to seventeen, then we'll come back to fifteen. So he says, Jesus true vine. Greater love has no one than this. You know, the hatred of the world. He's letting them know, you know, what to expect. Jesus, you know, Jesus warnings, the Holy Spirit promise, the disciples grief will turn to joy, ask and you will receive, you know, you can just see how this, you know, these things are going. Now look, prayer for the son, prayer for the disciples, prayer for all believers, that's, that's you and I, so you. You, you you could just see the flow of this conversation and how, how it's going. So now we're going to go back to John 15. So now with that point being established, for those who believe you can lose salvation, it's almost as if basically the way they present it is this is a potential condemnation verse that Jesus is is basically warning people about. To say, you know, if you don't abide in me, then you're going to be cut down and thrown in the fire. But we have to, you know, we keep things in context and we keep up with the flow of the conversation. What was being said? What was going on that led up to that particular verse or verses? So what they would try to how they would try to paint this narrative as this is almost like some sort of verse of. Of warning or condemnation actually that is far from that this is actually a, a message of comfort a message of you know 
don't worry guys you got this this is what this is this wasn't you know jesus trying to you know scare them and say you all can lose salvation this was actually the opposite now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to read and with all that in mind we're going to you know talk about these verses so we're going to start at verse one i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman or you know farmer every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purchased it that it may bring forth more fruit now they will have a verse like this and because it's recorded christ saying every branch in me they will take that as okay well if the branch is in him then hey that must mean that they are saved right they are connected to the true vine it says every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth more that it may bring forth more fruit so you know if you do good works you're connected to the true vine if you don't do you know enough good works then hey you know you're actually not connected to the true vine you're going to be you know cut off see what he says here number three now ye are clean through the word which i have spoken unto you verse four abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me now this is this is not christ giving some sort of potential condemnation or warning to say if you don't do enough good works if you do too many bad works then you know you're going to actually lose the salvation you currently have and you're going to you know you're going to be in fiery damnation this is a this is a comforting message of in Christ's absence they would continue spreading this gospel message so to hear that Christ is about to die and he's about to he's saying he's about to go back to the father and now it's almost like we're without a we're without a leader now Christ is comforting them to say listen in my absence you all will still do mighty things and even greater things in my absence. Christ was basically saying, because you believe in me, you're good. This is essentially what Christ is saying. Christ is saying, listen, you all believe in me. You believe the words I say. Just do what I what you've been taught to do by me. Follow my command, my commandments, go out, spread this good news, this gospel message, and you'll be good. Because you believe in me, guess what? You're connected to the true vine. And since you're connected to the true vine, you don't have to worry about, you know, how are we going to function? How are we going to get along without Christ being here? And Christ is he basically reassures them to say not only to say you believe in me and you believe in my in my teachings and my words he says i'm gonna send i won't leave you comfortless he said i will send you another comforter so the holy spirit is just is just as much a comforter as jesus is you know they're they're jesus is god holy spirit is god so the fact you know and he and christ told them he said uh in acts he said to wait and wait to be uh endued with power from on high you know that of the holy spirit and just to see that hear that rush of wind to feel it and those cloven tongues of fire just to come on them and now they're speaking in all these different tongues in acts and acts one one and two it's almost like you can imagine just, you know, the fact when they saw Christ risen and then on top of that, the Holy Spirit came inside of them. 
their confidence just shot up because you remember when Christ got arrested, everybody scattered. I think that if I'm not mistaken, the only person that stayed was John, if I'm not mistaken, but everybody else scattered. So they went from being just panicky and scared to all now all of a sudden they just have the utmost confidence um and now you know they're willing to lay down their life for you know what they believe in now so in verse five you see you see he says i am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing now, he says, without me, you can do nothing. We have to understand that when we believe in Christ, we have now been reconciled to the Father. We are now made acceptable unto the Father through Christ. Since we have been made acceptable, what else is now made acceptable to the Father? Our works. So the good that we do is now counted as something. Why? Because we have been cleansed. So now we can present works with clean hands as opposed to sin-stained hands. Let's look at verse 6. If a man abide not in me, context, someone who has rejected Christ, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So someone who doesn't believe in Christ, like, okay, so first of all, let, let's get this out of the way. Whether you are a believer or an unbeliever, you can do good and bad. You can do good and bad as a believer. You can do good and bad as an unbeliever. The difference is for the unbeliever, their sins are not atoned for. So all the bad they do, that's on them. And any good thing they do is as filthy rags, as we've seen Isaiah uh, say before, is as filthy rags. Why? Because they are still dead in their sins and trespasses. So that good work is unacceptable. We see Paul talking about being slaves to sin someone who's someone who is not saved they can't do anything but sin they're either doing bad things or the things that are good are unacceptable they're still counted as sin but for someone who is a believer all those simple things that they have done or will do has all been atoned for all been atoned for and then the good things that a believer does do, guess what? Now that work has been made acceptable now. Now that can be counted for as something to the Lord. So if we see here in verse 6, it says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. We go back up to verse 2, and we see that same branch. It says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away. This is this is just Christ saying, listen, since you all believe in me, you know, you're good. You believe in me, trust and believe that the works you do because you believe in me, they're going to mean something. And even though I'm not here, my word is with you. My teachings is with you. Just because I'm not physically here doesn't mean I'm still not with you. It doesn't mean I'm still not leading you. I don't have to literally physically be here in order for you all to still follow me, follow my guidance. And on top of that, I'm still giving you the Holy Spirit. So when it talks about in verse six, uh, that branch being cast and withered and men gathering them, cast them in the fire for them to be burned. This is for unbelievers this is for unbelievers this is not talking about you know if you are a believer and you don't don't do as much good as you possibly can and you're going to lose it because how do you know 
where is the verse or where is the implication that that gives a threshold? All of these all of these supposed verses that support losing salvation is like they're open ended. You know, they're, they're ambiguous. There is no sort of way to kind of quantify how much or how long you have to be in something in order to know, oh, I lost it. it it's just not there. Okay, so now we're going to go to verse 7. He says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done un unto you. 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Now, we have to remember, being a disciple of Christ is not a requirement for salvation. Being a disciple is someone who follows after another person, the teachings of another. Judas was a disciple. If we look, if you all look at the last video I did about uh, Judas repent, repenting, you will see verses in there that show that Judas was a disciple like the other 11, but he wasn't a believer. So just simply being a disciple does not automatically make you a believer. So if someone is a believer, but they choose not to necessarily act on their faith, the most I could say is, you know, you probably have an argument to question whether or not that person, you know, is even saved in the first place. But, you know, you will have some people that are just carnal Christians, and that's just the reality of, reality of it. Not everyone is going to be full-blown disciples. You know, not everybody's going to be on fire as we all should be. Some will be on very on fire. Some will be babes all their life some will be carnal christians all their life it's just what it is but they have put their faith in christ and what he did for their sins and believe he rose again therefore they abide in the vine so now christ is christ is giving them this confidence to say look i'm the vine and my father is the husbandman or the farmer and basically, Christ has given this analogy of basically pruning or making room for more fruit uh, to be to be bare. So this, even though you could kind of apply this to a believer in general, specifically, Christ is talking to his apostles. He's talking to his apostles who's about to go out in his absence. And that's all he's doing is just get, giving them the confidence and letting him know that letting them know that you are OK. I'm with you. My teachings are with you. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you. My father is going to basically prune you. Basically, if you're doing for me, the father is going to make sure that you are equipped to have a successful mission. That's why he says, whatever ye shall ask, he says, where is it? Seven, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so ye shall be my disciples. So whatever they do, they were doing, if you remember, they were in Acts, they were doing a lot of signs, miracles, and wonders. And what was that doing? Bearing witness to their testimony. What was their testimony? That Christ had rose from the dead. So they were doing all of these things to basically verify or to let them know, hey, we're validating what we're saying because no, no normal person can do the things we're doing. So, you know, I just wanted to come and just to talk about this because, you know, there are people who will, <laughs> who will make this verse and this chapter to be almost like a, a chapter of condemnation. You don't do enough, then, hey, you're going to be, you're going to lose salvation. When this is the total opposite, this was actually a comforting chapter 
for the for the disciples of Christ, for his apostles, that in his absence, they will still be OK. Why? Because they truly believed him and they truly believed his teachings. And if they just continue to do what they've been doing, they will be OK as disciples. This had nothing to do with their salvation, so to speak. This was about them growing as disciples and being equipped to do this mission of spreading the gospel. That's what this was about, giving them comfort for this, for such a task as this. They were, they were sealed no matter what. They were declared righteous because they believed in Christ. They were attached to that vine. And they were going to be given the power to go out and do what they were going to do to spread this gospel message. So I pray God got the glory first and foremost out of this. And I pray whoever comes across this will be blessed and edified by it. I would love to hear your questions, comments, concerns down in the comment section below. So until next time, I love you all. God bless.